And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the story of a young girl who was able to win her way with all men, save one. So now, starring Lynn Allen with Vic Perrin, here is tonight's suspense play, Pretty Girl. Hi, Lieutenant. Sergeant Norman? Yeah. Where is she? We've got her down here at the end of the hall. Uh, wait a minute. On the phone, you said she had something with her. That, on the desk. That's all she had. No coat, no purse. Walking around in the rain with that thing in her hand. Been checked? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's heavy enough. For what? It's a good question. Let's find out. All right. Did you give a name yet? Nah. What does the doctor say? He's looking it up in his book. Hmm. I've seen her before someplace. She wanted to know if you'd be here. Me? Yeah, by name. She's a pretty girl. Awful pretty girl, Lou. Hello. My name's Louis Gagan. You know me? Sergeant Hammond said you asked for me. You know me? You look familiar to me when I walked in the room. Louis Gagan, police lieutenant. Mean anything? She hear you? She hears me. What's your name? Emmy Carter. C-A-R-T-E-R? Yes. Where do you live, Emmy? 1218 10th Avenue. What do you do? What do you do, Emmy? I go to school. You in the uh, university? Yes. All right, see what you can find. Right. What happened tonight, Emmy? Where have you been? What happened? Where's my purse? I don't know. Lipstick. Where's my lipstick? Probably in your purse. Where'd you leave it? I couldn't find my lipstick. I... I couldn't find my lipstick. I asked Sal. She wears my color. I... I wanted some lipstick. Here. Use my lipstick. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, What's his name? Uh, yeah. Ray Hamilton. You wouldn't know him. Doesn't he go to school? Teaches. Instructed my econ class. Ah, that's better. Thanks. I'll do the same for you someday. How does the college feel about that? Uh, same as they always feel. Awful if they knew. Ah, it's not as bad as it sounds. Dr. Brown has five instructors. Flunkies, really. And the class is so big he can only lecture it. His instructors have lab once a week. You know, we break into little classes, ask questions. Um, uh, I've got a question. What are you going to tell him? What would you tell him? Uh, I don't know. But whatever it is, he wouldn't like it. Too bad about him. He's too old for me anyway. You didn't think he was so old a couple of weeks ago when you met him. I wondered what it would be like to be kissed by a professor. He was the nearest thing I could find. Besides, I had to pass the course. Oh, you never looked at a book. I looked at him. Just as good. Oops, there he is now. Oh, well, I'll get in the bed. No, you sit tight. I'll talk to him out in the hall. This will only take a minute. Hi, Ray. Hi. How are you, stranger? Oh, just the way I've been hoping you'd look. Come here. Ray. It's so good to hold you again. It's so good. I, I wish I could see you every day and every night. It's so good. Well, th this is nice, Ray, but we can't stand here all night doing this. Isn't the rain awful? It bothered me before I got out here, but not now. I've got a lot of things to tell you, Emmy. Let's make tonight count, rain or no rain. Come on, get your coat. I can't. What? I'm sorry, Ray. I planned on a night, too, but I can't go out with you. What do you mean, Emma? We've got a date. Shh, I know. 
I know, and I'm so sorry. I'm terribly sorry, but what well, something's come up and I can't make it. Well, what's come up? What is this, anyhow? Well, Dr. Church has original copies of the Lehner papers. He got them from New York this morning, and he spent all day photostatting them for the library. Well, what's this? Well, wait. I have to do a term paper on the Lehner principle, and Dr. Church said I... Well, I could go over the original papers if I came over to his house tonight. What's the matter with the photostats in the library? They won't be available. It's a special favor to me from Dr. Church. I have to go to his house and work on them tonight. He has to return them to New York in the morning. Oh, I have to spend the evening at Dr. Church's. He and Mrs. Church have been very nice to me. He called me and told me about them, and I had to say I'd come over tonight. It's the only night I'll be able to do it. Don't you see? What about us? This is the only night I've got, the only night I can get away. But there just wasn't anything I could do, Ray. Dr. Church called right after you called, and oh, I felt so awful. I wanted to call you back, but I didn't dare call the econ department and ask for you. Well, you know how that'd look. And I knew you'd be there until you got here. My one night off. I know. I'm sorry. But it's a week night anyhow, and we both have to get up early tomorrow. Maybe you'll be free next Sunday afternoon. We could go out for a little while and do something. I'm here tonight. Shh, put your voice down. Oh, Ray, you don't have to get mad at me. I thought you'd understand. If I have to work, I have to work. And, well, I don't complain to you, and you have to work practically all the time. You know I'm trying to get my associate. Oh, don't be mad, please. We'll get together next weekend. Yeah, next weekend. And tomorrow night and the next night and the next night you'll be out with some college squirt, but you can't go out with me tonight. We aren't going steady or anything like that. After all, I, I can't sit around waiting for you to get, get your darned old associate all the time, can I? You're only young once, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I can't argue with you anymore, Ray. It's getting late. Call me about this weekend if you feel like it. Uh, Night. Hey, I... Say, you know, that guy sounded pretty mad. And then he looked pretty mad, too. Well, that's that. I better get a move on. You know, someday, little gal, one of them's going to come along that you can't handle. I'd like to see him. I'll probably marry him. And there'll be a very large explosion. That sounds interesting. And then somebody will get hurt. Ha! I'll tell her when she comes in. Take care of yourself, Sal. You do the same, sister. Hi. Well, why thought you left? I did. I came right down here in front and waited. Why? What time do you have to be there to go over your papers? I told Dr. Church I'd be there at 8.30 sharp. Where does he live? On the edge of Campus Drive. Fine. I'll take you. Oh, don't put yourself out, Ray. I was going to take a bus. I'm not putting myself out. I want to make sure you get to Dr. Church's, Emmy. Understand? All right. Let's go. It was awfully sweet of you to drive me over, Ray. Thanks for the lift. Thanks for letting me bring you here when I thought we were going out and have some fun. Oh. Well, thank you for trusting me, Ray. Well... You sounded kind of funny when I called this afternoon. We've had this date for a week. I thought maybe you were trying to get out of it, that you just didn't want to see me for some reason or other. Don't be silly. If you're all through questioning me, Mr. Detective, I'll go now. Emmy, look, I'm sorry. I thought maybe you had something else in mind, meeting someone else or something. Well, now you know. Wait. Let's not fight, Emmy. All right, Ray, let's not fight. I need you, Emmy, more than I can tell you. I... I mean, I, I wanted to be with you tonight, and, and now you're gonna... I mean, he gets to spend the night with you, and I have to be alone. I'm not working with Dr. Church, Ray. He's just letting me see the papers and use his desk. He doesn't want the papers out of the house. Oh? Oh, he won't be there? No. I've got an idea. 
Why don't I let him go and then come back? Maybe I can help you with your paper. Oh, well, that'd be fun, Ray, but I don't think you better. Dr. Church wouldn't like it if I had someone over when I was supposed to be studying. Well, who's going to tell them? I, I could pick up some Chinese food I've we... been thinking, Ray. Maybe we aren't such a good idea after all. I mean, I'm still an undergraduate, and you're still trying for your associate, and as long as you're on the faculty, it's hard for us to see each other. And besides that, you're a lot older than I am. I, I just think we ought to end it right here. Just like that? Yes. And you better not call me anymore or come by the apartment. Ray, I mean it. I don't want to see you again. Listen. <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to anyway? One of the Rover boys? I don't take this kind of treatment from anybody. <laughs> you'll see me again. Before I'm through with you, you'll see a lot of me. <laughs> are listening to Pretty Girl, tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. It's tough for a man with a record to avoid suspicion when his name is linked with a homicide. Friday night, Casey, crime photographer, wonders about an ex-cop kicked off the force for an old weakness, wonders what connection, if any, he has with the murder Casey's investigating. For details and for a mighty exciting mystery, listen to CBS Radio's Crime Photographer tomorrow night over most of these same stations. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lynn Allen with Vic Perrin, starring in tonight's production of Pretty Girl, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Emmy. Emmy. What? Did Ray strike you? Did he hurt you? When I was... I was 14. My sister told me I... I'd never have to worry about... men telling me what to do. She said I... I could tell them. And I could, too. They're like little dogs. They do what you tell them. It's fun. It's fun. Was it fun tonight, Emmy? Yes. Yes, it's always fun. Oh. Easy. Easy. Take it easy. Emmy, are you all right? Mm hmm. You looked a little distraught when you came in. He was out there arguing with her boyfriend, dear. Oh. Isn't that right, Em? You're always right, Dr. Church. <laughs> now, you see there? Who won, Em? Who do you think? Oh, <laughs> Walter. <laughs> oh, you're bound to argue with all of them, aren't you, Emmy? Walter. Am I right? Mm. I couldn't argue with a psychology professor. Oh, oh that's my wife standing there. <laughs> well, give the fire a poke now and then, Em. Use this here. All right. All the papers are on my desk. Just help yourself. Yes, sir. I still don't see why they should interest you. Well, uh, you ready, my dear? Mm, Any time you are, dear. I'll bring the car around. I'll get my coat. I just love your house, Miss Church. I'm glad, Emmy. So cozy and, and warm on a night like this. Not like our old apartment. I was a little surprised when you phoned up and asked to come over tonight. But, well, it's all yours. Oh, that's Walter. Good night, my dear. Good night. Oh, dear, dear, dear. That's probably Dr. Chase now. Will you answer it, Emmy, and tell him we left ten minutes ago? All right. <laughs> Hello? Emmy? Yes? This is Ray. Oh. I've got to talk to you. I know the way you talk. I'm sorry, Emmy. I was mad, I guess, but I'm not mad anymore. I want to see you. It's just no use, Ray. I don't want to see you. I told you that. But, Emmy, please. I just don't want to see you anymore. 
I'm not mad at you, and you're not mad at me, and that's that. Please, let me come over. No. I'm working. I have work to do. Lots of work. Well, you crazy kid, don't you realize I'm in love with you? You're my whole life. Oh, Ray. It's true. Oh, sure. Like it was in the car when you grabbed me. Well, that'll never happen again. I'm coming over, Em. If you come over here, Ray, I won't let you in. But I've got to talk to you. Em, two weeks ago, it was wonderful between us. You felt the same way I did. I know you did. What have I done? What's happened? <sighs> what? Won't you talk to me? There is nothing to talk about. We don't have anything to say to each other. It's over. It's finished. You go your way and I'll go mine. I'll be there in ten minutes. You come here, Ray, and I'll call the police. I can't talk to you anymore. I gotta go. Wait, Emmy, don't hang up on me. I've got to go. Goodbye. Jerk. We safe? All clear. Right. Hi, beautiful. Hi, Jug. How are you? Feeling better all the time. <laughs> hey, old church has got some pigeonhole, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Fireplace and all. I might live with him next semester if I work it right. Pretty nice place to have a date in. Cozy? Yeah. Thanks for the invite, sugar. Hey. Never mind. I know who it is. I don't. Ray Hamilton. Huh? Ray Hamilton. You know him. Mr. Hamilton? Ray, it's me. I just told him to go back to his old books. Oh, I see. He's persistent. So am I. A little old for you, isn't he, Em? That's what I told him. You tell him anything else? Well, it's a long story. He thought I had a date with him tonight. What made him think that? I don't know. I just don't know. <sighs> oh. Oh, gosh. Getting sleepy? A little... So am I. Twelve <clears> thirty <throat> uh, already. Mm -hmm. I better go. I wouldn't want Church to find me sitting here in his favorite chair when he comes home. But I sure hate to leave his nice little fire. Where's my coat, Em? Oh, here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Still coming down. Oh, sure is. From now on, I know where I want to spend all my rainy nights. Mm. I'll have to work on some more papers. <laughs> Gee, I'd better make it look good. When the churches come home, I'll be asleep at the desk with all those papers. That should impress them well. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Fine. Wonder what happened to your pal. Who? Ray. Ah, uh, him. Who cares? Well, I don't. Night, Em. Night, Chad. Emmy, I told you you'd see me again. Nobody can hear you. How did you get in here? Take it easy. You aren't going anywhere. You, you get out of here and you leave me alone. We're all alone now, Emmy. Just like I wanted us to be. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of anybody. You should be, Emmy. You should be afraid of something in life. We had a date tonight, Emmy. I'm keeping it. I, I told you I didn't want to see you again. I meant it. And this isn't going to help you. Then I haven't got anything to lose, have I? I'm going to call the police. You aren't going to call anyone. <laughs> had to pass the course. Had to smile at the instructor. Had to go out with him. Had to work on papers. Stay away from me. Don't come over. Don't see me again. I've passed Ray. the course. Ray. 
Jerry? This was going to be a big day in my life. I was going to ask you to marry me tonight. I was going to ask you to marry me while you were in here with him. I, I, I didn't know you were serious, Ray. I didn't know. You knew. You've known all along, and it's made you laugh. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. You know because every man you've ever met falls in love with you just a little bit. And if they ever stopped, you'd stop it. It'd kill you because that's the way you're made. Ray, listen. Listen, you get out of here now, and I won't say anything to anybody about this. We'll get together tomorrow, first thing, and we'll talk about it. Oh, Ray, I mean it's honest. I didn't see you on account of the great honest. I liked you. I, I think you're awful cute. Honest, I do. You look like a woman. You walk like one. Uh, you talk like one, dress like one, but you're not a woman, Emmy. You never will be. You'll always be a stupid little kid playing with grown-up toys. Ray, Ray don't. And I loved you. Leave me alone. I loved you. Leave me alone. <laughs> no, Emmy. No, don't. Leave me. Leave me alone! I told you to leave me alone! I told you to leave me alone! I told you! I told you! Coroner said he died instantly. I've got the others outside. The churches, her roommate, the boy. Want to talk to them? Not now. They don't understand it. She's a nice kid. I understand it. I... What are you trying to say, Emmy? Emmy? You... You were with the governor last month. That's right. I was on his bodyguard when he talked at the auditorium. You stopped. Stopped me when I tried to get his autograph. You were. You were kind of cute. Yes. I remember now. <laughs> the police officer. I'd most like to arrest me. Suspense, in which Lynn Allen starred as Emmy with Vic Perrin as Ray. Next week, the story of tension and danger in a small inn on the icy slopes of the Alps. We call it Premonition. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Pretty Girl was specially written for Suspense by E. Jack Newman. Featured in the cast were Sam Edwards, Paul Dubov, Dolores Pinard, Tim Graham, Ann Morrison, and Bill Justin. You enjoy City Hospital every Saturday in the daytime on the CBS Radio Network.